Welcome. It's documentation office hours. This is the 8th of June, 2023. Topics on the agenda for today include 2.401.2, 20401.1, a pull request uh, for from a new contributor, end of life notifications, container end of life, and a, to a couple of topics from our last session. Anything else you want to add, Bruno? Uh, no, thank you, Mark. Okay. So Chris Stern is acting as release lead for 2.401.2, and we'll need to create the change log. Kevin Martins is planning to be back next Monday, so we he may be able available to do the change log and upgrade guide, um, hoping. And if not, we'll take care of it in the docs team. Next topic is related to that, but it's sort of an embarrassment in the live stream. There are at least <laughs> at least two so items. Yeah. Two items that need to be deleted from the 2.401.1 change log because yeah. they were already delivered in earlier releases, earlier LTS releases. But the two of you uh, really handled that beautifully during the live. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Me being embarrassed and saying, whatever, we made a mistake. <laughs> yep. And that's okay. So we've got a, we've also got a new pull request from Jeffrey Chen. Um, with a conversion of something from Wiki. Meg McRoberts agreed in last Docs Office Hours Asia that she was willing to review it. I don't think she's had time yet, but I'll have we'll have that discussion during Asia Office Hours in about 12 hours. Yes, uh, I already done my review, but it's very uh, low level review. Um, you know, it's just a few things changing uh, commas or world, something like that. But uh, we need somebody who has a better picture from far away for that farther away to change things because of course some things have changed uh, since the wiki was created and some things are already in other parts of the documentation so yes please make whenever you have time your review is welcome exactly so where the the real question is where should we put the things that are there if if they if they justify keeping them and if not what do we do with them? Exactly. Good. Yes, but I, I can see that Jeffrey is still uh, motivated. You know, he's uh, doing um, a merge from master into his branch twice a day. So he wants right. that to be covered. That's cool. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yes, and, and that's a good sign. Good. All right. End of life notifications in Jenkins Core have are now live. Uh, they became available in 2.407, and uh, a fix is included in 2.409 for Fedora 38. And next LTS baseline in about 10 weeks will include it as well. I don't oh, know so if... Oh, go ahead, Bruno. No, no, it was just a, a stupid joke. But uh, uh, 10 weeks from now means that we'll be in August 10 weeks from now. Uh, Correct. It goes way too fast. My brain is still in April. Wow. I wholehearted agreement. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so August is the plan and we look forward to it. Now we've got an additional idea that I don't know when it will happen because it's lower priority for me than other things. Uh, it is that our container controllers uh, should be, let's, let's, let's call it this. And then we've got a further idea, which is agent control or container agents end of life needs even more work before it's possible. So what we've seen is, well, Bruno, you had done you had done some work on the con the container agents build recently, and it's possible for users to be referencing a very old, unmaintained container agent image, and they they get no warning. Their administrators get no warning. There's no hint that you've chosen a dangerous, outdated controller container image or control agent image, and so. The idea here is if we can find a way to warn people that they're running old agents, it'd be good. 
I guess one thing is node version node versions node monitor plugin um, already provides something like this. Oh, really? Okay. Um, a report on outdated versions of Jenkins remoting and 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 JDK. And then the platform labeler provides automatic labels of agents. So, so we're pretty comfortable that it's possible. Uh, yes, but uh, the question is with or without touching the <laughs> images of the agents. And, and I think that's a piece where well, platform labeler hints that it should be feasible without touching the agent image, yeah. the container image, since platform labeler looks at the agent, for instance, it looks at its operating system and says, this operating system is such and such a version. So we could do something like that and say, we could conceivably extend the end of life notifications here and say, mm -hmm sweep through all the all the play all the agents and if any of the agents have a in fact maybe that's an enhancement for the platform labelers if your agents have end of life have reached end of life we somehow put up a, a, a monitor there that would be interesting but the thing is uh, will everybody have a version of platform labeler in their jenkins instant that's no the they won't so that's that's a good point whereas jenkins core does does have that they would always have jenkins core yeah good point but that's interesting nonetheless uh if a platform labeler could reuse what the kind of framework you put for in the jenkins core uh that would be interesting and mm -hmm. it already does I, I i did not understand i had a look at the platform labeler um code but i did not fully understand how the magic was happening and but it does a really for sure you know the other day i tried platform labeler with um jenkins running on my android phone and it managed to find it was android and it mm -hmm. was working so why not i guess uh this is a very good foundation for the rest of the work yeah all it does is it reads a file from the the agent <sighs> file system right it's... i don't want to know about the magic i just want to experience the magic <laughs> yeah and, and... <laughs> And that's all that that's all that the end of life notification does, right? Is it reads and acts on a file in the file system. So not a not a complicated thing. If the agent operating system is helping us with that, now in some cases, Arch Linux, the agent operating system will tell us what what operating system it is. The case of things like Alma Linux 8, the operating system is not end of life, but we can tell that it exists as an operating system. So it's those kinds of subtleties that have to be handled. All right. Anything else on, on the agent, on the end of life concepts? Um, not for the time being, thank you. But I guess I'll, get, I'll have lots of questions when the meeting ends, as always. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, and we had a leftover question. Should we document tested operating systems? I think it's a good idea. Maybe the simplest approach is let's create a, uh, in fact, let's just do it now. Let's create a ticket that that describes it because there's no reason to leave it in our notes. Let's just put it right mm -hmm. here and create an issue that says, let's do, this is a website enhancement. No, this is documentation. Uh, include tested operating systems, tested JDKs and operating systems in change in change log or upgrade guide when we release a new version, we test many operating systems and Java versions. It would help the user, it might help some users if we documented 
those configurations at each release. Packaging repository. Performs most operating system specific tests. There we go. Issue uh, submitted. Thank you, yes. Mark. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a stupid question, or maybe that's not the right meeting to ask this question. But uh, if there is somewhere of the systems we are testing on, and by system or operating system, what do you mean? Real machines, uh, VMs, not Docker, I suppose? Actually, we test in in multiple ways. So, and, and you'd have to read the repositories to see which tests run where. Okay. Uh, because it, it's a good question. Uh, let, let's, and, let's do a, yeah. a quick look just to see. So for example, in the Jenkins packaging repository, I think it's Jenkins CI slash packaging. Here, if we look at the CI job, And I'm not sure if this one has a nice pipeline overview. No, it it we would have to look inside the content of it. But what you, what you'll see when it runs its test is when you expand the list of things being tested. Which one is it? Is it this one? 19 minutes worth of testing. Here we go. If you scroll to the bottom of this, and you can see all sorts of things that are tested here where they're listed. Hey, we're testing this and this and this and this. We're testing Tomcat mm -hmm. 9 and we're testing etc. So all sorts of interesting and useful data is hiding in this about um, if we look at it, if I look at it from the, the pure console view, what we'll see is we look for, let's look for Rocky. Here you go. One list is Debian 10, 11, Ubuntu 20, 22, Alma 8 and 9, Amazon Linux 23, CentOS Stream 8 and 9, Fedora 37, Oracle Linux 8 and 9, Rocky Linux 8 and 9, OpenSUSE Leap 15, all tested. Okay. And so the, um, those are candidates to be described. Yeah, okay. My idea behind that was... Uh... <laughs> Would it be uh, easy or not to maintain by a real human, or could we automate that? Oh no, we would, we would, we would definitely want that, that so. automated. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, we would, we would without a doubt want that automated. Of course, because I think that would be a pain in the neck to try to maintain that by hand, uh, because it's right. always changing. It, it uh, certainly is. That's correct. Yeah, very good point. The, yeah, the matrix we I say matrix because maybe we are testing on several um, different CPU architectures for the same mm -hmm. Linux distro, for example, for the same operating system. Uh, so maybe we should have a matrix some somewhere that describe. And we may even discover things that we don't know yet. But what is tested on what system? Where is it a, a VM? Is it a real machine? Or I don't know. But that's mm -hmm. interesting nonetheless. Well, uh, so uh, as another example of places where we do testing, we've got this one right here. Let's go to this thing because I never remember where it is, the release checklist. Oh, I, I know where it is. It's right here. We'll look at it this way. We'll go this and acceptance test. And if we look at Debian latest, for example, so here is a set of tests that run on various operating systems to mm -hmm. test packages for LTS and for um, for uh, weekly. And okay, cool. so again, that's another part of the testing that happens. Uh, acceptance tests. Yeah, so maybe the on... first task would be to find all the source of information. Right, the and then data. say, and then hey, the, the these are the things. And then, of course, we've got um, the weekly or the 
CI tests of the of Jenkins core. And it tests certain operating system configurations. We've also, and the acceptance test one, interestingly enough, runs on, if I remember right, if we check this one, we should see that it runs on system 390. Yeah, so it runs on containers on AMD and on system 390. Okay. So yes, yep. Uh, so it's captured, and I think we can use that as a good starting point if someone wanted to work on it. Mm -hmm. See, it was CI more core. There we go. And let's just take this one and the last build, the last successful build, because that's the easy way to see it. And then on this, if we look at the overview, that gives us a very quick. There we go. All right. Any other topics other than my still needing <laughs> to submit on the main newsletter? Anything else? <laughs> no, Mark, thanks. All right. Thanks, Bruno. Recording will be available Thank you, in roughly 24 hours.